Today's video marks the start of a new series of motherboard restoration. Some time ago, I got those 6 motherboards for a reasonable price, but I haven't had the time to work on them yet. And although each motherboard has its own issues, they are all in bad shape. The main issue we will face is corrosion, which you will see in a moment. But there are also bent pins, broken plastic clips and other cosmetic issues. The model is a P2B, a slot 1 motherboard from ASUS in revision 1.04. But as we will learn in this episode, these boards may have a shady history. So stay tuned if you're curious what it is. So far, I believe there will be 6 videos. One video dedicated for each board. And in each episode, we will restore, investigate, troubleshoot and hopefully fix any issues we come across. The goal is to restore as many motherboards as I can. However, I also want to give myself a time limitation, so I do not waste too much time on one single board. And as mentioned in my previous video, I will start selling the retro hardware I repair. If you're interested in one of those boards, please contact me at my email address displayed on the screen. But before you start typing, have a look at the next section, where I introduce you to each of the boards. I will also number them, so we will be able to distinguish them throughout the entire series, and you can easily reference the board of your preference. So, then let's start with the first board. And here we can see already the first issue on the third ISA slot. There are touching contacts. Furthermore, some of the traces right below the IDE in the floppy connectors seem to be corroded. There's another corroded trace right next to the very dusty slot 1 connector. A plastic clip of one of the SDRAM sockets is also broken. And finally, we have a lot of rust on three connectors on the I.O. panel. I think we need to replace both serial and the parallel port. And this is our first candidate. Motherboard number 1. And here is our second motherboard. And you can already see that the corrosion has not held back. The bottom right corner is completely corroded, as is the last ISA slot. I have no idea if this is fixable. If the corrosion entered the inner layers, it will be very tough to get a permanent fix on this board. This is a shame, because the rest of the board looks actually pretty decent. I did not spot any other issues, apart from the dirty slot 1 connector. Even the ports on the I.O. panel are halfway decent. If we manage to repair this board, we may only have to replace one single serial port. And this is all for motherboard number 2. Let's see what surprises motherboard number 3 has in store for us. This time the bottom ISA slot seems to be ok, however the middle slot is corroded on one end. The ASUS chip is once again corroded on one side. It is a lot less than on the previous board, but it is still pretty bad. The wires below the IDE connectors are also suffering from bad corrosion. I hope we will be able to neutralize most of it by using white vinegar. Later, when I am cleaning the boards, you will see me apply white vinegar to corroded areas. This will hopefully stop any further corrosion in the future. There are also 3 clips on the memory sockets that need to be replaced. The 3 clips close to the HEP slot seem to be fine. And finally, the ports on the I.O. panel are in pretty good condition. I am sure they will be ok after cleaning. And this is motherboard number 3. At first glance, the fourth motherboard is in the best condition so far. There is some slight corrosion on the lower ISA slot, and of course, next to the ASUS chip, a few traces seem to be suffering from it as well. Otherwise, there is very little corrosion on the traces below the IDE connectors. The clips on the memory sockets are also in good shape. The board is just a bit dirty, similar to all the previous boards. And finally, the ports on the back are a mixed bag. I think we can save both serial ports, but the parallel port needs to be replaced. And this is all for board number 4. The ISA slots on board number 5 are a bit dirty, but I believe they are ok. Similar to the first board, the ASUS chip does not suffer from any corrosion. What a surprise! There are however a few traces that seem to be suffering below the solder mask but nothing as serious as we have seen on the other boards. 
And apart from a good clean, we may have to replace one of the memory socket clips. To my surprise, the I.O. panel is spotless. I don't think we have to replace any of the ports. This board takes definitely the lead of having the best chances to be revived. Then let's add the sticker with a number 5 so we will be able to find it again. And here is board number 6. Again, a very clean board. There is no corrosion on either of the ISA slots nor on the ASUS chip. A few traces are affected, but that is minimal damage. Overall, this board looks quite good, until we reach the top next to the ATX connector. There is a lot of corrosion and probably a failed capacitor. We may have to remove the power connector to make sure none of the traces below are corroded. And finally, the ports are in bad shape too. We probably need to replace one serial and the parallel port. And this is the last board. Now that you have seen every single board, you can place your bets in the comments and let me know how many will I be able to fix. If you feel adventurous, you can also let me know which of the boards you think I will not be able to fix. But now it is time for a bath. Ok, the boards are clean and here is our first board. Now we can finally start with the restoration. You will see me remove solder mask from questionable traces, remove the lower ISA slot to make sure no corrosion is hiding underneath and of course we are going to remove the serial and parallel ports. In case we run into broken traces we will use jumper wires to reconnect them and of course I will also fix any other issues we have discovered so far. Once the restoration is complete, I'm going to test the board using a Pentium 2 with 400MHz. And while I do not want to talk you through the entire restoration process, this is the perfect time to tell you why those boards may have a shady history. What if I tell you that all 6 boards are counterfeits? At least this is based on a document allegedly released by ASUS. You can also see an entry on the RetroWeb for the ASUS P2B in revision 1.04. It gets complicated however when ASUS compares the revision I have here with the revision 1.10 of this board in their document. Of course there are differences between those two revisions, but I wonder what has happened for ASUS to release such a paper. All I can say is that my 6 boards do fit the supposedly fake boards. So my question is, was revision 1.04 ever released by ASUS? Why compare revision 1.04 with a later revision in their document? Of course, one could speculate if those boards are really fake, or if a commercial fallout between ASUS and a supplier was the reason for their existence. Whatever it was, it is all a bit vague. If you know more about ASUS and their P2B in revision 1.04, please let us know in the comments. And if you want to read more about it or have a look at the document, you can do so by visiting my website. 
It is in the early stages, but I will try to add articles, resources and additional material to complement my videos. So, if you feel like, be my guest and visit bitsandbolts.com. But now, let's get back to the restoration. Hey, hey! We are not done yet. The board doesn't work, does it? Let's not give up so quickly. Have you seen that the 3.3V LED is off on the post analyzer card? I really thought that the missing 3.3V on the PCI slot is causing the system not to show any signs of life. One occasion where a wrong assumption helped me to figure out what was wrong. But first, let me explain why the missing voltage is not an issue. For the purpose of this video, I will focus on 32-bit PCI slots only. There are 64-bit slots as well, but they are far less common. Widely spread are the 32-bit 5V PCI slots with a key to the right. There are however 3.3V variants as well, but I do not have a single board with such PCI slots. The notch on PCI cards is there to prevent an incorrect installation. There are however universal cards that would fit in both variants of PCI slots. Like the Voodoo 3 I recently equipped with an active cooling solution. The 3.3V LED not lighting up on this P2B is not an indicator of a fault since we only have 5V PCI slots on this motherboard. And by the way, the voltage is also missing on my 486 Soyo board. But it is present on my ASUS P3BF. So it all depends if the board layout wires up the 3.3V pins of the PCI slot. Nevertheless, this dark LED made me look for the 3.3 voltage rail from the power connector. I came across this unpopulated diode and then this MOSFET from NEC. And guess what? It detached from the motherboard. Of course, that immediately reminded me of the blaster board. A board with a Sound Blaster Live chip that was in for repair. The board booted, but there was no audio output due to a very similar issue.
So, then let's reattach the MOSFET and see if this revives our dead board. Hey, the board posts! I can't believe it! It works! Of course I have to test more to make sure the board really works, but I'm happy to see a boot screen. I have a lot more footage and topics I would like to cover, but this video is already quite long. Therefore, I will distribute the content over the next 5 or 6 videos, and hopefully you will learn something new in each of them. We will flash the BIOS to overcome some limitations, we will run unsupported Coppermine CPUs, and we will check a system monitoring utility from ASUS called PC Pro. And of course, there is much more. I will continue to apply solder masks to all exposed traces that we have freed from corrosion and covered with a fresh layer of solder. I will also reinstall the ISA slot, which I haven't really mentioned during the restoration, but believe me, it was quite boring underneath. I will wait with reinstalling serial and parallel ports however, because I have something special planned in one of the next videos. And before I go, let me give you a preview of next week's board number 2. The corrosion on this board looks terrible and I wonder if it can be rescued. I hope you're looking forward to more motherboard repairs. And this is all I have for you today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.